Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the Duskmorn preview event. Today we're taking a look at an updated version of the Smuggler's Surprise combo. So the initial combo involved Smuggler's Surprise for 6 mana, putting 2 creatures from our hand onto the battlefield, and then ideally we have both Calamity as well as Terror of the Peaks. Then we can saddle Calamity by tapping the Terror attack, make 2 more copies of Terror of the Peaks, and with all those entered battlefield triggers we can often just win the game on the spot. Now we still have a few copies of Terror, but it's not always the best card to just hard cast for 5 mana, since it's likely to get removed, doesn't always have an immediate impact when we play it, and instead we now have access to the Red Overlord, which we can impend for 4 mana to deal 4 damage to any target, so it gives us a little bit of interaction at least, but we can still cheat it and play with our Smuggler Surprise alongside Calamity, deal 4 damage when it enters to any target, and then once again saddle, attack, make more copies, and that's also usually going to add up to at least 20 damage. So so I've uh, basically replaced a few copies of Terror with more of the Red Overlord, and we also got uh, Green Overlord as a great way to ramp, making an everywhere land token that makes one man of any color, and this also has the impending mechanic, so we can eventually get access to the 6-5 that makes more land tokens when it attacks. And then uh, the Overlord is also something we can maybe put in play with a Smuggler Surprise, or maybe copy with Calamity. And then I'm still a fan of the one of a Voltborn Tyrant, as something we can also maybe search up with our Archdruid's Charm, and this plus Calamity can gain a lot of life and draw a lot of cards. And then, as we mentioned, two copies of Archdruid's Charm could maybe play a few more copies. I've kind of messed around with the numbers a bit, but this is a way of ramping early, getting a land, can get our commercial district to surveil, and then we can also search up a creature if we have Surprise and Calamity in hand already, and just need a Tower of the Peaks, for instance, to combo off. So it's quite versatile can also deal with artifacts and enchantments. And then our creature removal includes Pyroclasm, another nice reprint in standard, dealing 2 damage to each creature, and Brotherhood's End dealing 3 damage to each creature, and Planeswalker can also deal with artifacts. And then we've got more ramp at 2 mana with Glimpse the Core, the Iron Crag as a one-off, and then the Armadillo doesn't ramp but can just find a basic land, gain some life, and then can also be another big creature we put in play with a Smuggler Surprise, and then sometimes if the game goes long and we build up a lot of of mana, we can cast a surprise for more than 6 mana, and then maybe mill additional cards to find more creatures and lanes, can also make our creatures with power 4 or greater gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn, so it's a pretty versatile card, if we draw multiple copies we might just fire one off on turn 3, just to make sure we can keep hitting our lane drops, so we do have that flexibility as well. And then the mana base also picked up Thornspire Verge, which is perfect here, since we have plenty of forests and mountains to enable it. And then this is a way to cast our early removal spells like Pyroclasm and Brotherhood's End. But at the same time, this deck doesn't want to run a ton of mountains, since we need triple green for Archdruid's Charm especially. So then having too many red sources that don't make green mana can be a liability. So instead we've got lots of red-green dual lands to fix those issues. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. We've got Druid's Charm into Surprise, just missing the creatures now, but we'll try it. And then I guess Aggro, Brotherhood's End to keep us alive. Probably don't need Paraclasm as well. Another Charm. Can also use one to search up a creature. So for now, still leaning Druid's Charm, although I guess Glimpse Decor is somewhat comparable. And then I can keep the Charm to tutor up a creature later. We'll just get this out of the way. Alright, another surprise, so we're not lacking those. Could also surprise for 3 mana just to find some creatures, but uh, let's pass for now. Opponent plays a Collector's Vault, so it might be more of a Reanimator deck. Brotherhood's End can also destroy their artifacts. For now, I think I'll search for lands and then we can still surveil. Keep a creature on top, and then I can surprise it onto the battlefield, although it's only going to be one of them. So maybe at this point we just grab the green overlord, 
which gives us more mana to set up the second Smuggler Surprise. Yeah, tricky spots. Can give this a try. I guess we'll just cast it then. Still gets us a land. Bodon did have a bit of triumph, so they might have a different answer lined up. It's gonna be an unwanted remake, letting us manifest the dread. None of these are particularly helpful. And our opponent's got the Overlord, making a pair of two ones. All right, Verge enters untapped, but there's nothing to surprise onto the battlefield, so this might be another setup turn. We can glimpse, charm, find a creature, and then next turn, surprise, hopefully, for a lot of value. Can offer the trade. Charm could also be a way to exile the opponent's overlord if they try and do something funny with it. They're gonna render inert. Yeah, that's something funny. So exile in response. Otherwise our opponent would have been able to remove those time counters and attack with their 6-6, making more tokens. So next turn, if I cast Surprise, I could Spree two modes to also mill four cards and hopefully find some creatures. All right. Could do it now in the hopes of hitting Calamity plus another creature. I think I wait until end of turn, in case we hit two creatures without haste. Opponent activates the vault, which we could have destroyed with a Brotherhood's End in the meantime, but they're not discarding any creatures to it at least. And another Overlord, fair enough. Just making tokens. Do they have another render inert? Alright, let's cast this. And I guess we can choose all modes here. And we actually found Overlord plus Calamity. So that could have been game last turn. Now they still maybe have a chance to respond. But uh can start Clearing some of the tokens. My creatures are indestructible right now, and I'll be able to surprise again in my turn to make indestructible. So I think that should seal the deal. Opponent's gonna try and get lost. And I guess the most fun we can have is to cast another fully spreed surprise. And that'll do it. Calamity saddled with our overlords, attack, get a bunch of triggers, and just win the game. Awesome, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. We've got double overlord, just needs an extra green source, but we should be able to find it with district. And then some interaction. Yeah, I think this is functional enough. And then Armadillo gives us a turn two play, so I'll try it. Pass a turn. Get a forest. Opponent on the Enduring Vitality Storm Splitter combo deck. Well, hopefully they don't have 
the aforementioned Storm Splitter. I guess I could keep up Archer's Charm to exile the Vitality so our opponent doesn't get to combo. Maybe that's safer. Could just exile it now, I suppose. I think I'll wait for them to commit to Storm Splitter if they have it. They sure do. And then by exiling the Enduring Vitality, it's kind of the perfect answer here. Since they don't get to use the ability on Storm Splitter. Otherwise, our opponent would have been able to cast a spell, make copies, use those copies with haste to tap for mana to cast more spells, go wide, potentially already win the game. Now we still have to worry about another Vitality showing up, but uh, we bought ourselves some time. So, time for Overlord. And then next turn we could, at the very least, surprise, putting in Overlord and Terror, which can also deal with a Storm Splitter by dealing 6 damage. Opponents will cease a card in our graveyard, that's okay. So they must have a bunch of cantrips to then combo off once they assemble Storm Splitter plus Vitality. They're still going to deal quite a bit of damage here. Analyze, get a land. But they shouldn't be able to win right now. But yeah, they do have enough to get another Enduring Vitality. But we should be able to deal with the Storm Splitter now. Probably wait for them to cast the Vitality, although that's risky because if they have an instant, then they can still make a copy of Storm Splitter and maybe keep going off. So I think the safest move is to just do this now. And take out Storm Splitter. And then they won't have the mana to play both the next turn, even if they have them. And then, yeah, it's gonna take us a couple turns to close out the game, so we may need to draw more threats or interaction. Yeah, if this deck becomes popular, we might want to increase the number of uh, Archer's Charms in our deck. Overlord was an excellent draw. So, can uh, attack, see if they take it. Could have also just played Overlord to clear the Vitality, since that way we can maybe deal a little bit more damage. Six as opposed to four damage. But I'm hoping they just take it and then Overlord can deal more damage to their face. Alright, hopefully they can combo from this position, but another Storm Splitter could do it. So yeah, I think in hindsight just Clearing the Enduring Vitality could have gotten us in for two more damage. Don't think it's going to be hugely relevant. So it's do or die for our opponent. Maybe an end of turn Questing Druid. Yep. Finds a lands and another Vitality. That one's kind of redundant. Alright, they actually have another Storm Splitter, so we could still die here. If our opponent can string together enough spells. Torture Tower for starters. One card left. It's a Cease, so they get to draw. And if they can find more cantrips, we're in trouble. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So yeah, our uh, three mana play of exiling the Vitality likely saved us. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a ramp into Calamity. Hopefully Pyroclasm is good in the matchup. Could also cast two of them with four mana, which might be a way to deal with larger threats. 
opponent on joint colors and an invasion. Okay. So, Overlord discarded. There might be some synergies with battles like Render Inert, which also plays well with Overlord. Battles are good for Delirium synergies if our opponents are running those. It's gonna be the Fly Trap as one of those Delirium cards. So we could double Pyroclasm. Could just wait, hope they don't enable Delirium next turn, and then we still get to ramp with the Archroot's Charm, and then maybe next turn double Pyroclasm once there's an extra creature in play. But if they can enable Delirium before attacking, I could regret it. Just an attack for two. And an Overlord can transform the battle. Could also use Charm to exile the Overlord. But uh, yeah, for now, I think we're more interested in getting an extra land. Could also tutor up, let's say, a Terror of the Peaks to combo with Calamity. But the priority is going to be double Pyroclasm. So. Getting an extra land in the meantime seems fine. And we'll get a commercial district to surveil and look for one of our bigger creatures. Armadillo, not the best with Calamity to be honest, so we can probably do better. So at this point I can fetch a mountain to save myself one damage. And double Pyroclasm. Alright, so the board's a little cleaner. So now if we draw a Smuggler Surprise I can charm for a second creature and set up the Surprise combo. Opponent casting the Black Overlord. And Delirium has certainly been enabled. Well, there's the Overlord. So now, assuming my creature survive, I could set up the kill next turn. That's a pretty big assumption. Although we know one card in their hand, which is not removal. So it's a close call. I would probably start by playing the Red Overlord, just damaging the opponent directly, and the next turn Calamity can go off. What's the alternative? Just Charm, get rid of the Overlord, but then we're just kind of waiting for this to come into play as well. The Fly Trap's going to distribute some counters, but don't really care about those. So yeah, I'll uh, give this a shot. At least at 5 toughness it survives another Overlord dealing 4. So they need a pretty specific removal spell. Alright, take 7. And we'll see what they get back. It looks like the Stick Twister can deal 2 and gain 2. That's fine. I guess we do have to do some math here to make sure we have enough next turn. So maybe just discarding the Archer's Charms easier, so I don't have to do as much math. And then cast Calamity. Saddle. Attack. We get two Overlords. And then we get to distribute eight damage. So let's say I take out the fly trap, then our opponent would only take 14, so that's not quite lethal yet. If I deal 4 to the stick twister, 4 to my opponent, they're at 11. I guess they would fall to 1. Next turn they also get their overlord back, although they wouldn't be able to attack with it at least. 
Yeah, maybe just taking out the flying tramp is the safest. So I'm not necessarily in that next turn. So this is where Terror of the Peaks would have sealed the deal. Opponent takes it, falls to one. And let's see if they have another Overlord for lethal. It's gonna be a fly tramp distributing more counters. And that's 15 damage. Alright, GG's. Close one. Opponent set one. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Got a keepable hand. Couple ways to fix our colors early. Brotherhood sent for interaction, as well as the Overlord. And for now, we're probably gonna use the Armadillo. That way we don't need to worry about hitting our land drops. Okay, so just gonna pass. And then Archer's Charm could get Calamity, could use it to ramp. Got a few options. Would love to find our Smuggler Surprise. Our opponent with Corvolt and the Noble Thief making a treasure. Could also remove that with a charm. I think we'll uh, let that go. And for now just get a creature. And then Calamity seems like the most important one. As opposed to an Overlord. Could also get Commercial District for ramp, but we have a lot of mana already. Alright, found a surprise. So now we just need to get to 6 mana to set up the combo. And uh, I guess I'll wait a turn to Brotherhood's End, maybe get two treasures with it next turn, since I don't have anything else planned. Opponent's gonna draw with the explosion. That's fine. So the main concern now is counter spells and instant speed removal. Okay. So destroy all artifacts with mana value 3 or less. And then hope our opponent taps out to leverage Corvolt and the Noble Thief. And then a 6 mana surprise putting in Calamity and Overlord should seal the deal. They found a Tower of the Peaks. And with a double red now to cast it. But it's going to be a warped space. Alright, I see the combo now. So they get to play Terror for free. But yeah, that's fine. Can just take it out with an Overlord trigger. This enters. Take out Terror. And then saddle. And that's going to be another 22 damage. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's got a bunch of removal. No real combo or ramp. So this one could go either way against a creature heavy deck. This is fine. I'll give it a shot. 
going on black white. And uh, green overlord's a good draw. Will give us something to do on turn three if we don't need to brawl through its end. Now we can surveil. And I'll definitely keep the surprise. So just missing Calamity to set up a very exciting turn. Turn 3 Overlord, and then turn 5 for maybe looking to cast a surprise. opponent has got blue mana in there as well, which uh, might complicate matters. Builder's Talents make a wall. Currently nothing to reanimate really. So yeah, happy enough just using the Overlord. So we've got a turn to cast the Brotherhood's End if her opponent presents more creatures. Opponent's got their own Overlord, so yeah, that's convenient. Deal with all the two ones. This also triggered the uh, Builder's Talent since it enters as an enchantment and not a creature. Charm also an answer to the multitude of enchantments that are added to standard now. So if we can afford to wait, maybe we'll get Calamity, and then we're guaranteed to put in Calamity with Overlord. Virtue of Loyalty is fine. So yeah, I think we'll wait a turn. And don't need Pyroclasm. Another Builder's Talent making a wall. I guess those are getting pretty large now. So they will be able to soak up some damage. But still gonna stick to the plan. Although now our opponent does have two mana available, so they could have removal for Calamity. So ideally we draw an extra land here, so we can play Surprise for one more mana. Although that one's tapped. We have options. Could also Surprise and put in Double Overlord. Maybe take care of the wall token. Then next turn they get their Overlord back end of turn. If I go for Calamity plus Overlord now, it's really bad if they can destroy Calamity. If it's just a nowhere to run, it's not a huge concern. Let's see what's on top first, I guess. Fable Passage. Don't need that anymore. With Overlord coming in next turn, I don't think I can afford to wait. And then with the first trigger, I may as well go face. But yeah, looks like they have a go for the throat. No, maybe they don't, or they're gonna wait for me to saddle. Alright, we get to attack. And now we can take out a 4-8. Although, I guess if they have any way of... Playing an enchantment here, like a Nowhere to Run, they would add two counters to their creatures as well. If I just go face, we can just burn the opponent out, so maybe that's the best strategy. Because next turn Overlord attacks, I play another one. So don't need to worry about any blockers. Opponent did indeed have a Nowhere to Run, so that does trigger the Builder's Talent. So Calamity down. But at least the walls don't attack. And now a single Overlord trigger would be game. So 
So now a single Overlord trigger would be lethal, so our opponent needs both removal and life gain to survive. So yeah, this kind of shows the importance of which exact removal spell you have. If they had a go for the throat, this game might have gone the other way. But you can see the synergy with our enchantments here and the builder's talent. Nowhere to run could also be pretty useful if decks playing lots of uh, awards, enchantments, take up in popularity. And uh, yeah, opponent is at 5, but can still just attack and then play another Overlord. And that should do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got early interaction, ramp, and then surprise plus calamity. So that's quite promising. Still need to find a creature to combine with calamity, but there's a lot of those. The overlords, terror of the peaks, and even a voltborn tyrant. For now, look for an extra land. The Verge also perfect alongside the Surveil lanes. Alright, points got to the rest. Can punch a hole in our plan. Takes my ramp card. So now I guess we can fetch with passage. Sure. And another duress, now maybe taking the surprise. Well, our hand went from being quite exciting to a lot less exciting. Want to get a forest for Archer, it's charm. All right, Overlord is a combo with Calamity, but probably will have to use the impending mechanic. Unstoppable Slasher, so points on the demon combo, it seems. All right, so to make sure I don't die, I need to answer the Slasher, although it will come back. So it's only a temporary solution. Would have much rather removed the demon. Opponent's got another one. Well, that's convenience. So we're not that to a bloodletter now. And it's going to be the annex to draw cards. Can also make a 6 6 demon. And uh, yeah, Calamity is not the draw we were hoping for. Their opponent can make a 6-6. Six, six. And we can finally play Calamity. Although it's going to be Calamity on defense, so I don't die to Bloodletter. And then I'll have to trade for Slasher. And then next turn we get another Calamity to maybe pair with Overlord. So there's still hope. There's Bloodletter. If there's also removal, we're dead. And next triggers. And let's see if this works. It does not. Alright, GG's. They had all angles covered. But yeah, the early duresses were quite bank breaking. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We've got Paraclasm for interaction. Do need to hit a third land, ideally a green source, but most of them are. Yeah, I'll uh, try it. We have Surprise and Calamity, so we're most of the way there. Scavenger is scary, and it might outgrow the 2 damage from Paraclasm. So ideally they just play another small creature out. Alright, that's pretty much perfect. I'll take the 1 damage, 
to cast Paraclasm, since uh, there's a small chance I want Archer's Charm, in which case I can't have Mountain in play. Hall Creeper doesn't apply nearly as much pressure, so that's fine. And then uh, we'll use Overlord. So yeah, I just need to keep hitting land drops. Can always use Charm to get a land. And then ideally find another creature to combo with Calamity. Opponent's got the Enduring Innocence as a card draw engine. Also good to maybe exile with Archer's Charm so it doesn't stick around. And uh, yeah, we did find a land. Let's just pass a turn for now. Could also use Charm to get whatever creature we need to combo off with Calamity. As our opponent plays another Innocence. Yeah, I don't think we fight the card advantage battle and instead just try to go for the kill. So, Terror of the Peaks, I think, deals the most damage overall with Calamity. So untapped lands to maybe win the game. And that's an untapped land. Now our opponent does have a couple blockers and some lifelink as well. So that might complicate matters a little bit. So four damage. Can maybe clear the innocence. Opponent does get a counter. attack, get two more terrors, and yeah, this should be plenty. Can uh, just go face since that's more damage than clearing the scavenger. And then at least ten more damage. Alright, and that'll do it. Awesome. So yeah, good to see our updated version of Smuggler Surprise combo in action. And yeah, the deck seems to have picked up some useful new tools. The deck now has maybe a bit more interaction than it had before, thanks to the Red Overlord. And then the Green Overlord is perfect for both a ramp as well as a potential finisher that we can copy with Calamity. So a decent deck can still be somewhat weak to more controlling strategies if they can just counter your Smuggler Surprise, for instance. And then very aggressive decks, especially if they can go big and uh, survive or burn spells, those could also get out of hand. So we got lucky to deal with those uh, aura creatures before they got too big. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.